Hello and welcome to Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm Angela Fischetti. So today's workout is a beginner's kettlebell total body workout with supersets. Supersets meaning working two different exercises back to back without any rest. Now the accessories we'll be using today will be a sticky yoga mat. Also, I'll be using for demonstration purposes because it won't add additional resistance, but it will help with form, a fit ball. If you don't have a fit ball, a nine inch Pilates ball will do as well. And then I also have three pair of um, kettlebell weights. I have five, eights, and 10. Now, this leads me into the precautionary measures and medical disclaimers. Both the mat and the fit ball or the Pilates ball are made out of latex. So if you have a latex allergy, you do want to look for non-latex or latex free. Now, if you have any knee issues, especially with flexing the knees, bending the knees, then I'm going to strongly recommend, I'm going to take your back here to my wall, that you do this particular version of squats, even for dead lifts. So I've got my knees bent and I'm only bending them to what feels comfortable for me. And I have the ankles slightly forward of the knees and then I'm lining up ankles to knees, traveling up the thigh to the inside of the high pelvic bone. And this is called your iliac crest. It's really technically the inside of your hip bone, the iliac crest. So this is not only great for those of you who have been told not to forward flex the spine, to bend down, to pick up something. It's also great for those of you who have osteoporosis of the spine and you may have been told not to flex the spine as well. Plus those of you with the um, postural deviation of hyperkyphosis, where you kind of have that hunched appearance. And then of course for knee issues, it keeps you upright and you get to control how low you go. Now also, if you are medicated or not for hypertension, you have vertigo or GERD, please avoid dropping the head down while you're working out. You wanna keep your head at neutral, so the chin neutral. Also, um, if you have rotator cuff or pinch nerve, um, I'm going to be presenting a shoulder exercise that will be very helpful for you folks to do and very beneficial for all of us as well. And also if you have carpal tunnel syndrome, now especially with working out with kettlebells, I find a lot of this goes on. This is extension of the wrist. It doesn't matter the placement of the arms, but a lot of this goes on with kettlebell work contraindicated for carpal tunnel. So we wanna keep those wrists straight for you. Also, if you have golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, golfer's elbow is also known as medial epicondylitis and tennis elbow is lateral epicondylitis. You folks are going to need a bit more advice to find out if doing any bicep and tricep work is appropriate for you. Please seek further advice. If you have vestibular challenges, so challenges to your balance, we're going to be doing something called a kickstand deadlift. So it's done unilaterally, meaning one, one side at a time. So you folks can take it to the wall for the squats instead. And also please follow this advice if you are vestibularly challenged, pardon me, um, but please do not work out by yourselves please have a companion with you at all times. So I'm just checking my notes to see that I make sure I told you everything. Yes, so these are all um, chronic health concerns. So if you have any chronic issue, please I invite you to preview the video before participating and look for what you can do. However, if you're not sure, then I would invite the medical healthcare practitioner who knows your body best to preview it as well, to help you make an informed decision. So what are the benefits of kettlebell training? Well, there are several. For a better cardiorespiratory fitness, you have a stronger posterior chain, or which is the back body, and you have greater explosivity and power 
This is important in the aging process. So I haven't incorporated much of this. It's time to bring it into this channel by way of kettlebell work. And um, also it's great because it's typically associated with low impact exercises. Now, just a couple of gentle reminders. Whenever you're working out on your own, always feel free to stop and rest whenever you need to. However, I'm not inviting you to quit so you just take a couple of breaths and return to the work, even if it's just for one more repetition. Also, to please make sure you keep yourselves hydrated with water during the workout. Now, this will bring me back to a precautionary measure. Maybe you've been told medically to avoid drinking a lot of water for kidney and bladder issues. Will you follow that advice, please? Now, within the community tab on the channel, please look for the RPE chart. I have a link to it. It's a rating of perceived exertion chart. Really great for those of you who are on certain medications like beta blockers, um, if you have a pacemaker, or if you just don't know how to take your training heart rate. It is advised for the viewers of this channel to work out at an RPE between three to six. And also look for a link to a really great um, article I found on Healthline about training with kettlebells. And finally, look on the channel for a warm up and a cool down video. It's just one video where you can interchange the movements. And the reason why I filmed this is because it is advised for those of us 55, five, five years and above to warm up for a full 10 minutes prior to any workout. So what are, what are we gonna do here today with the beginner's kettlebell total body workout for supersets? Well, I'll be teaching you um, nine exercises vertically. We'll be doing one set and a set is a group of eight to 15 repetitions. After this approach, just understand though, while we do this approach, we will not be using any of the equipment. It is to help those of you who are new to exercise, new to strength training, and have chronic concerns. But after this approach, then this is when we're going to move into using the equipment, and we are breaking it down into four blocks of two exercises each, but there's nine exercises. So I'm kind of stretching the definition of supersetting on that ninth exercise, because basically it's supersetting unto itself. So now we begin with breaking down um, an athletic ready stance, how you're prepared to hold your posture while you're strength training. So much like we did at the wall, I'm going to line up my ankles to the knees to the inside of that high pelvic bone. You also want to double check that your toes are in the same line as each other. Now I'm gonna to turn to the side here, and oftentimes I find females will stand with an anterior pelvic tilt. It means they're tipping their pelvis forward. Well, we actually wanna take that into a gentle posterior pelvic tilt, also known as a pelvic tuck. But beware, you don't wanna go so deep into it where it becomes like a standing abdominal crunch. You don't want that to happen. So let's begin now. And I'm going to grab my fit ball here because again, it's about form. And when, you're, when you don't have external resistance, it's really important to apply a sense of your own resistance. You wanna have control over what you're doing and not just flailing your limbs. So this is a kettlebell um, front squat. I'm just gonna use the fit ball inst instead of my kettlebells for the moment. And I'm gonna come into that athletic ready stance with the knees soft. And on the inhale, I sit back into a chair. And on the exhale, I stand up and I'm engaging into that posterior pelvic tilt, engaging the glutes, engaging the quadricep muscles. Inhale, sit back, exhale, come on up. Breath is in and out through the nose. You wanna pause at the peak of the contraction right here. And of course, you have the wall sit, also known as wall seat, as um, an alternative. 
I'm going to do one more. And now, the next exercise is a kettlebell gorilla row. This implies bent over. So not great for those of you with the back spine issues. So for all of us, I'm going to demonstrate just simply standing upright, a back row, so you can still do the work. So athletic ready, we bring the arms out in front, we puff up the chest, shoulders back and down. Exhale as you pull, inhale as you release. No collapsing of the chest when you bring the arms forward. No forward head projection when you draw the arms back. Now I'm gonna turn here so you can see my scapulae, the shoulder blades. You don't wanna force them, they will retract. Now I am gonna show it to you with the legs wide apart for those of you who want to warm up this way. And we'll go for one more repetition and take your time rolling on up. For the next block, we have kickstand deadlift. So be careful with the vestibular challenges and a decline pec fly. However, we're going to do it standing. So I'm gonna use the fit ball for the kickstand deadlift. So here we have a bit of a split stance. It's not this huge, big step back, folks. And I'm up on the ball of the back foot. Now, the difference between a deadlift is that the, and a squat is that the squat, you're sitting back into a chair. With the deadlift, you're in a hip hinge. Now, I'm keeping the ball very close to my leg and thigh. I'm focusing out in front of me. The primary work is on the front work of leg, but it is that gluteal that's really going to get a lot of the work. Belly button is drawn up and in, and I want you to think you're going up and forward. Up and forward. I'm going to go for one more here, and I'm going to take it to the other side. Now, you might notice that there's a different form on this side. Well, I have an injury since a child on this side, so I just do the best I can. Some people like to lift the back leg off the floor, but when you've got heavier weight, that might not feel so great. But you can use it as an option. Really get in there. And are you breathing in and out through the nose? One more repetition. Ooh, feeling that already. Now we come into that standing decline pec fly. A lot of times people do this, right? For their fly, that's fine. But I wanna get up and under the breast tissue. So arms out wide and I scoop up and under. So I come here, up and under the breast tissue. It's a scooping movement. Come to the side a little bit for you. The chest does not collapse. You're standing tall. And when you, you, you're using the kettlebells, you will feel the work in your forearms as well. And by the way, yes, you can use dumbbells for the work, but it is going to be a different feeling for sure. Last one, pause and slowly down. Now we're moving into a kettlebell swing with delt abduction adduction. So again, just using a fit ball for the form. I'm gonna stand with my legs wider than my hips and under and up. You wanna have control on what you're doing. I'm not swinging my ball up to the ceiling. It's not about that. Engaging the gluteals at the top. Now, some people go real low and up. Well, that's great, but I'm not too sure that's all that terrific for the demographic of this channel, unless you can do it without issue. One more. And watch it rolling on up. Now we are going to do the delt abduction. Abduction, really great for those of you with rotator cuff or pinched nerve. 
So I bring the arms alongside of me. However, notice they're not touching me. They're about 10 to 15 degrees away. The reason why I'm doing this is because if I were to begin the exercise from here and go out and up, then I've just tied in that supraspinatus rotator cuff muscle that typically gets easily injured. So if you stay about 10 to 15 degrees away, you're not going to engage it. So here we go. Exhale, inhale. So here we have abduction, adduction. Abduction going away from the midline, adduction going toward the midline. Pausing at the peak of the contraction. My palms are facing forward. Chest is lifted high. We're going to go for two more repetitions. And slowly down. Just take a couple of shoulder rolls here. Now, the next block will be what I'm calling a bicep scoop along with a tricep lift and push the wheelbarrow. You'll understand when we get to it. So I'm gonna bend my elbows at a 90 degree angle. I wanna hold on to that angle for the entire exercise because it's not this type of thing. It's not a bicep curl. So from here, I exhale, scoop the arms up, pause, inhale, lower down, maintaining that 90 degree angle the whole time. You've really gotta think about what you're doing. You may have to work in front of a mirror as well. And of course, besides the biceps, the anterior deltoids, the front of the shoulders are working. You will feel those forearms working as well. Back muscles are involved. And lift. And when you're working and holding out here, you will feel your core muscles. With the belly button drawn in, you're engaging one of those core muscles for sure, the transverse abdominis. Last one. Now, I turn the palms toward each other. I'm still holding the soft fist and I take that 90 degree angle bend out behind me. From here, I lift and push. So think about the handles on a wheelbarrow and what they look like. And push, lift and push. Notice I'm not doing this and I'm not doing a kickback, folks, or at least a typical kickback. Lift and extend. Whew, gets right in there. One more. And lower down. Let's take a couple of shoulder rolls. Now for the final exercise, and you'll see why in a moment, why this is a superset unto itself. This is the around the body pass, a kettlebell around the body pass. A couple of things to note. Elbows are straight, knees are straight and you pass off your ball or your, your kettlebell both in front and behind you. So here we go. Now reverse, you wanna keep the whole body steady. You don't, you don't wanna be swaying all over the place. You don't wanna jerk your body around. Now, the more you bend your elbows, the more work it will be. But for right now, this is beginners. One more, here you go. Okay, so let's move into the workout now with the kettlebells. So the first block going to be kettlebell front squats along with the gorilla row. So I'm using 10 pounders for these. Holding the arms up close in front of my shoulders. Okay. Athletic ready stance. Here we go. Inhale, exhale, pelvic tuck squeeze. And this is where we want for those of you medicated or not for hypertension who have vertigo and GERD to please keep that head up and neutral, not to look down.
One more. Slowly lower, legs wide, here we go. Bend over, stay upright, those of you know the modifications. Pull, pull. Now I could also rotate from the shoulder joint as I pull up. I can also alternate if you prefer, whichever way you like. Is that belly button up and in? Is the eye gaze out in front? One more. Last one. Slowly come up. Back to front squats. Take that pelvic tuck squeeze. Two more. Gorilla row. One more. And slowly up. Now we're doing a kickstand deadlift along with the decline pec fly standing. Okay. Split squat. Well, not as much, I should say that. Just a bit of a step back. Okay, so hip hinge is your deadlift. The difference between that deadlift and the squat, right? So here's that hip hinge up and forward. You can work with one weight in front of you with both hands holding on to the kettlebell. Woo. One more. Other side. Always takes me a bit of time to adjust into this side, the challenged side. That's okay. We do the best we can. Chest up and forward. That standing leg, the front leg, I should say. That gluteal is getting a lot of work. <laughs> One more. Hmm. Now the standing decline pec fly. I'm using five pound kettlebells. Scoop up and under. Lots of core right here with the arms out in front. One more, Woo. and back to the kickstand deadlift. Your choice, one, one kettlebell or two. Split stance, chest up, you're up on the ball of the back foot, and up and forward. Inhale, exhale, pause. Chin up. One more.
One more. Back to the standing decline, peck fly. Athletic ready, here we go. Some nice big shoulder rolls if you need them. I will. Hmm. Now the kettlebell swing with delt abduction adduction. I'm using 10 pounds one on the kettlebell swing. You want to have clearance, you want to bang into yourself, right? Head up. Squeeze those glutes up top. Chin up. Chest up. You want to come up vertically. One more. Easy. Roll it up. Five pounders for the um, Delt abduction, adduction. This one in particular, please be careful, carpal tunnel. Starting 10 to 15 degrees away. Pause at the peak. One more. Control it down, back to kettlebell swing. 10 pounds. Explosiveness and power. Two more. Easy does coming up. And delt abduction, adduction. Working that glenohumeral joint of the shoulder. Exhale on the lift. One more. Woo. Okay, into bicep scoop, right? Now be careful, carpal tunnel especially. 90 degree angle bend and up and slowly down. You don't want the hands coming closer and closer to your shoulders, folks. Working biceps, forearms, front deltoid, some back muscles here. And for elevation purposes, and also into pectorals. One more. Turning the palms toward each other. Same 90 degree angle bend out behind you. We want to lift and push. Lift and push. Notice the weights are not alongside me. Lots of core when you're back here, lots of core. One more. Back to 
bicep scoop. You can experiment with clasping the hands around the kettlebell handle, clasping the fingers, I should say, or opening them up. It's up to you. Whew, I feel this. One more, please. Oh, turn the palms toward each other. 90 degrees back here. Lift, push, lift, push. I have some clients who are farmers and I see them pulling that wheelbarrow behind them and doing all kinds of stuff for it, with it. It's amazing. One more, please. Wow. And let's set that down. Shake out the hands a little if you need to. And then the final exercise, the superset unto itself. I'm using an eight pound um, kettlebell here for around the body pass. You don't want to stand too wide because it's going to be real hard to bring that kettlebell around you. Straight knees, straight elbows. Here we go. Hold and opposite direction. This is weird for me. Hold here, we do it again, right? Because it's the superset concept. Last one, and reverse, last time now, last set. Gotta get myself upright, less bend of the knee, Angela. And hold here, great. Now let's just take a couple of movements to cool down, but I am going to advise you to head on over to my warm up cool down video on the channel and do it like an additional at least five minute cool down. Get the heart rate down. Now I'm gonna bring the arms straight out and draw the hands back. This is extension of the wrist. So carpal tunnel, you folks will straighten the wrists and reach out through the middle fingers. Breathe, expand the chest. I don't have the arms above my shoulders. Now inhale, turn the thumbs down, exhale. I want you to interlock the fingers behind you, clasp the thumbs, draw the palms together. Again, be careful here with forward head posture. If you find that you're doing this, then if you're very, very tight through the chest, right in the front shoulders, you can use a yoga strap, you can use a towel behind you to easily open all of this up, stretching the pectorals, the front delt, elongating those biceps. Take a couple of big shoulder rolls, and then let's tie in some lateral flexion, side body stretching. So I'm gonna slide the right hand down toward the going toward my right ankle, the outer right ankle, as I turn my sternum breastbone away from the floor. I don't want to collapse the right side organs by turning down toward the floor. Then if you have rotator cuff or pinched nerve issues, you might want to just leave your left hand on the waist. Otherwise, we can bring that arm up and over, stretching out through both sets of middle fingers, stretching the intercostal muscles, between the ribs, the obliques at the waist. 
Inhale, turn the palm up, grab an imaginary hook, push into that left heel. Exhale, take it over and we slide down the left as we lift the right, sternum away from the floor, belly button in, bring that arm up and over, lift the chest up. When you stretch on your own, you want to hold your stretches for 20 to 30 seconds. Inhale, turn the palm up. Exhale, reach out. Take a couple of nice big shoulder rolls. And that's what we've got here for you today, folks, here on Boomer and Beyond Wellness. So, folks, if you um, like the work here, if you find some value to my content, kindly subscribe, share, comment, hit the notification bell. But also, if you would like to subscribe to my new upcoming free newsletter with more workouts, more fitness um, tips and tricks, etc., um, please go to the subscribe tab on my website, which is boomerandbeyondwellness.com. I'll repeat it boomerandbeyondwellness.com. And until next time, eat your greens, eat your beans, drink your water, and be well. Thanks so much.